In today's video, I'm going to talk about five different RTX 5070 Ti graphics cards that I have right here. So the Ventus 3X OC from MSI, the Tough Gaming from Asus, the GameRock OC from Palette, and the Gaming OC as well as the Aorus Master from Gigabyte. So without further ado, uh, let's see what kind of uh, features each of these cards has to offer and how they compare to each other when it comes to gaming performance as well as thermals and noise. Let's begin. The Ventus 3X OC is the same card I used for my launch review of the 5070 Ti. So in theory, this is supposed to be an MSRP card and therefore one of the cheapest 5070 Ti's. But keep in mind, it is still a very decent card as far as uh, build quality goes with a metal frame around it, a metal backplate and a plastic shroud around the fans. Now the size and compatibility of this card is pretty good. Uh, it is not too large and a bit more than two slots thick. So it's it should fit most ATX cases on the market, as well as a lot of uh, smaller form factor ones. In terms of features, it is a very simple card and it doesn't offer any RGB, any extra connectors or a dual BIOS, but you do get a GPU holder, which I do appreciate a lot. The Tough Gaming OC doesn't seem that much bigger when you uh, look at the stock photos, but compared to the MSI, it is three slots thick, it has bigger fans and it is taller, longer and heavier. The build quality is very good with the shroud being metal as well. And you also get a few more extra features, including a dual BIOS, a second HDMI port on the back, a GPU holder and some RGB. So it does look a bit more impressive than the Ventus, but it should also cost you more. The GameRock OC from Palette is about as long as the Tough Gaming, but it is a bit thicker. It is also really well built with a nice metal frame around it and a metal back plate, but the shroud around the fans is made of plastic. You also get a dual BIOS, a GPU holder and a small mouse pad, but the biggest feature of this card is definitely its RGB heavy color shifting shroud that should work really well if you mount this card vertically. And uh, while the looks are subjective and this design might not be for everyone, I do think it is a very good thing that Palette is trying to do something new and something that's just a bit different from the rest of the models on the market. The Gaming OC from Gigabyte uses the same dark gray color scheme they've been using before, and that does go really well with most motherboards and cases on the market. It is another big card uh, that's a bit more than three slots thick and a bit longer than the Tough Gaming from Asus, but it should still fit most typical ATX cases easily. Uh, you get a dual BIOS, a GPU holder, a little bit of RGB on the side of the card, and a bit more RGB behind the fan. So it is also aimed at people that prefer for a vertical mount. But again, I think that the best feature Gigabyte has to offer is that extra year of warranty for a total of four, which is such a good thing to have. And if the Gaming OC is not uh, big or shiny enough for you, uh, Gigabyte is also launching this Aorus Master version. And this is a massive car that is four slots thick and about 36 centimeters long, uh, which makes it bigger than most RTX 1490s I've tested before. And since this is a higher end model, you obviously get all the typical features like a dual BIOS, a GPU holder, way more RGB, a little display that you can use to display your images or animations. And keep in mind, this model has the LEDs in the actual fans themselves and not behind the fans like on the Gaming OC, uh, which gives it an even more of a unique look. Now, all of these cards use a 12 volt 2x6 connector to power them up, uh, but if you're not going to use a native cable, uh, all these cards come with adapters that can vary a bit per model. So the Ventus, for example, comes with an adapter that connects two 8-pin PCIe power cables, while the other cards come with a three 8-pin power connector instead. On the back, uh, all of these cards offer three DisplayPort 2.1B connections and one HDMI 2.1B, with only the Tough Gaming from ASUS adding an extra HDMI 2.1B for a total of two. Now, for those of you that haven't seen my full RTX 5070 Ti review, uh, I'm just going to do a small summary before I start talking about uh, these specific models. So in short, the uh, MSI 5070 Ti Ventus, uh, that is a base MSRP model, 
outperformed the RTX 4070 Ti Super Gaming OC by about 12% on 4K resolution and about 8% on 1440p resolution, which is not a huge upgrade, but it still puts it just next to the RTX 4080 Super in terms of performance, uh, which is not a bad place to be for both 4K and 1440p gaming, especially when you consider the price. The 5070 Ti has an MSRP of $750, which is less than the 4070 Ti Super and much less than the RTX 4080 Super. So in theory, uh, you should be getting more performance for less money. Uh, but it is also hard to talk about prices when you don't really know how much they will actually cost and if they will be available at all. But nevertheless, Feature-wise, the new 50 series comes with DLSS 4 and multi-frame generation, uh, which is, uh, as I've said before, a very complicated topic that requires a lot of nuance because it can be very useful in some games and then not so useful in others. So I would say it is an extra feature, an extra option that you can decide uh, if you want to use or not, and it is available on all 50 series cards. Now you can find more information on that and a much bigger 45 game comparison in my original 5070 Ti launch video uh, that I'm going to link in the description box down below and you can go ahead and check it out. Now the standard boost spec of the 5070 Ti is 2450 megahertz, but as usual, that spec means very little and every single card boosts a lot higher than that. Plus, the boost numbers will vary a lot and very much so depend on the game that you're playing. Uh, as you can see from these results that were taken while playing Cyberpunk 2077 as well as Black Myth Wukong. Memory speed of all cards reports the same number, so none of them have an overclocked memory out of the box. And uh, if we look at the average FPS difference in games uh, using the MSRP Ventus as a baseline, all other four cards are a tiny bit faster. The Gaming OC by about 2.5%, uh, the Tough Gaming and the Palette by 3%, and the Master is technically the fastest, being 4.5% ahead of the Ventus from MSI. Now, 2-5% to is a small difference and not something that you would uh, typically notice while gaming, but it is a nice bonus to think about, especially uh, if you're paying a bit more for a more premium version of this chip. And those faster 5070 Ti's will also be faster than a 4080 Super Founders Edition. Now, if we add the power numbers to the mix, uh, there are some differences as well. The Ventus 3X uses the least amount of power on average, while the others have a very similar power consumption, uh, about 8 to 10% more than the Ventus. So they are all a bit faster, but also use more power in order to do that. And it is hard to say if Ventus here just happens to have a more efficient design, or there is just a bit more of a sample variance at play. When it comes to noise, uh, all cars turn off their fans in idle, so they're all completely quiet when they have very little or nothing to do. And under load, none of them are actually loud. The smallest card is the loudest, as expected, but 40 decibels is still completely fine for most people. If you want something that is almost impossible to hear, the other four models will definitely give you an option to achieve that. So the Tough Gaming is the quietest of them all, uh, followed by the Gaming OC and the Master, with the Palette being right behind them. That being said, the Tough Gaming is also the only card that had a little bit of a coil whine in some situations. Now, it didn't happen in most games, and when it did, it actually wasn't as loud as some other cards can be. But if you're picking a GPU with noise as your main concern, uh, please do keep this in mind. Now, if we add thermals next to it, uh, all of these cards look objectively fine, yet again. Uh, the MSI does technically run a little bit warmer than the others, but it is really hard to argue that 65 degrees is that much worse for your GPU than 60 degrees is. And uh, if we compare the performance profiles of the other four models, all of them look very competitive. With similar noise results, the core temperatures were all within a couple of degrees, with the Aorus Master and the Gaming OC being technically uh, a tiny bit better and with the palette having a slightly higher memory temp than others. But again, none of these differences really matter that much. Now, I think that ASUS uh, does a good job at offering two bias profiles that are noticeably different. 
Uh, one is almost inaudible with good temperatures, while the other makes a tiny bit more noise with great temperatures. But personally, I would keep it on the silent mode. And the same goes for two gigabyte cards and their profiles, although the difference between the profiles here are a little bit smaller. Uh, I do think that both the Aorus Master and the Gaming OC could go even quieter in their silent profile while still showing uh, great thermals. When it comes to palette, uh, there is nothing wrong with its results, but like with their 5090 Game Rock, I do feel that there should be a bigger and a more significant difference between the two bias profiles. Uh, and I would really like to see the silent mode being even quieter because the card definitely has enough of thermal headroom to do so. And on the other hand, uh, the performance BIOS could also lower the temps uh, a bit further at the expense of a little bit more noise. And that way you would have two uh, actually proper options to choose from. But at the end of the day, uh, which 5070 Ti will make the most sense uh, will heavily depend on the prices. And uh, just like with the 5090s and the 5080s, we don't really know what the availability will be. And I actually don't even have any uh, recommended retail prices, uh, except that the MSI Ventus is supposed to be an MSRP model, while the other four are supposed to have some sort of a price premium. And considering that all of these cards perform well, objectively, uh, the cheapest one you can find will offer the best value. So the Ventus from MSI performs completely fine, and it would be the first option of the five. But uh, the other four do offer some extras that might be nice to consider as well, like uh, lower noise levels, uh, better thermals, a more unique look with some more RGB, an extra HDMI port, or that extra year of warranty that Gigabyte offers. So they all can justify a bit of a price premium, but when you consider that they all perform roughly the same, each brand will still have to make sure that that price premium is reasonable and not too much over the top. So. A bit of a price premium is fine, but please do not overpay for any 5070 Ti, especially if the price gets closer to base model 5080s that are much faster to begin with. Anyway, that is all I have for today, but before I go, let's hear it from the sponsor of this video. This video was brought to you by Seasonic and their Vertex power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are extremely efficient and very quiet due to their fan design and their hybrid fan mode that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They come with a variety of connections for any kind of system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power cable for the latest NVIDIA graphics cards. And to wrap it all up, they now offer a nice and cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Now, I hope this video was helpful, or at least a bit. Uh, if you want to see more content like this one, please do consider clicking that subscribe button or uh, following me on other social media channels. Uh, all the links are in the description box down below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.